Well, hello and welcome to the anniversary edition, the first anniversary edition of uh, the wondrous stuff of uh, podcast and vodcast number 52, because we do one a week, so it's the 52nd. And uh, it's the uh, uh, broadcast live on Google Hangouts on air every weekend, except this is a Monday, because <laughs> Newcastle won again. Uh, this is the place you'll find news, information, commentary in science and engineering and technology from the past week and beyond, and anything else that interests us from inside our tiny little human brains. As ever, my name is John Gardner, and to help me out tonight uh, on this journey to knowledge, uh, let me introduce my colleagues, uh, Richard Smith and uh, Ross Davidson, say hello, chaps. Hello, chaps. We also joined by Mr. Chris Copper. Hello. Say hello, Chris. Hello there. Okay, well, this is this is going to be an interesting one this evening because it is a birthday edition. So let me just play that. Hello. <laughs> hey. And, hey. And let me. Hey. And let me, and let me do. Oh. Yes. <laughs> hey. And let me put my little hat on. Hello, like that. We're all full of the joys of. I always said spring. It's winter, of course. And uh, and what and what we're going to what we're going to have going on tonight is because Ross hasn't got a topic. Uh, he's going to build a PC from scratch <laughs> in forty-five minutes. I don't think I'll get it finished in forty-five minutes. Why's my hat not working? So we've got we've got Chris we've got Chris and Ross building a PC. Uh, they're providing background entertainment uh, for the for the uh, science and engineering and technology stuff that we are we are going to give you tonight, and jolly good it's going to be too. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with um, uh, one of Richard's topics, and this is something about is it something about domestication? It is, yeah. Uh, oh, he's got balloons as well. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, so, so uh, what are we domesticating, and and why are we domesticating, and how long does it take to domesticate? Well, yeah, exactly. How long does it take to domesticate? So, uh, perhaps the dog is the is the best known domesticated animal, um, and the dog is descended from the grey wolf. And this happened. When do you think this happened? When would you when would you guess this might have happened? Domesticated dogs. Well. They've certainly been around, sort of Bronze Age. So I would say, um, oh, we, I guess we we could be talking sort of BC, somewhere in BC. Further back, Ross, Chris. How did you go further back from BC? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a time system actually that that does cope with that. <laughs> Fifty thousand years BC. Fifty thousand years. Chris? Um, I'm, I'm going to offer no guess. <laughs> so, so hang on. So, so right. How, how, how long, how long have humans, uh, Homo sapiens, been oh, on the on the planet? Uh, modern humans is about quarter of a million years. Right. Okay. Well, not say that long then. Uh, somewhere between quarter of a million years and uh, last Friday. Correct. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it, it's at least twenty-seven thousand years ago. Ooh, so, wow. so dogs arose around the same time as um, as hunter-gathering population. So before agriculture, um, and they are they have the same and common ancestor as the grey wolf. So they they diverge from the grey wolf around this time. So we start um, we started we started trying to make friends with grey wolves and then give them do uh, bony or dog biscuits and uh, and then they became our. Is that something like that? Something along those lines, yeah. yeah. You see, God, I'm a scientist genius. So they reckon that um, the domestic dog and grey wolf differ by at most 0.2 percent in terms of the DNA sequence. So, for comparison, the grey wolf differs from its closest wild relative, the coyote, by 4 percent. So they are they are very closely related. And so, and so, just by so like of a yardstick, how how much do we differ from like a simian? Um, it's, it's going to be more. Than, it's going to be more than four percent. I would have thought. Right, okay, so well. I thought we were ninety-eight percent similar. Ninety-eight percent similar. Chris reckons. Okay. Right, then, well, two percent then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dogs, dogs, and grey wolves are not point two percent. So they, they are, they are 
you know, almost indistinguishable in that sense. So, um, so you don't, you, but you, within that, you don't see distinctive dog breeds until about three thousand years ago, and vast majority of breeds is is in the last seven hundred years. So they've been they've been relatively recently domesticated, but you can do it a lot, um, a lot faster than that. So the subject of our topic is actually the Russian domesticated red fox. Now they started domesticating these in a scientific experiment in in. 59, um, and this experiment continues today um, in Russia, and they were interested in the topic of domestication, but also the process by which wolves became tame, tame domestic dogs. So they bred for tameness. They basically split the split the um, the foxes into three categories, um, three classes. Class three would be the foxes which um, flee from experimenters or bite or um, you know, basically show signs of aggression. Class two would be the ones that let themselves be petted and handled, but they but they show no sort of friendly response, and um, so they're just kind of neutral. And class one is those that were friendly towards the experimenters, so wagging their tails, whining for affection, things like that. Um, and they selectively bred these intensively, so they, they picked the, the ones that fit into class one and then bred those. Next generation, the ones that fit in with class one, bred those. So, so f forcefully, selectively bred over a short period of time. Um, by the sixth generation, they needed to introduce an elite class, so higher than class one, because um, the animals were now scoring higher than class one. So they needed to sort of subdivide that. Um, so these were the animals now where they were um, trying to actively establish human contract contact. They were whimpering to attract attention. Sniffing and licking experiment as like dogs do. Yeah, yeah I do all that. Showing this behavior from one month old. I do. I do all of the, the, <laughs> sni the sniffing, licking, and yeah. Um, so they said by the just by the tenth generation of this process, um, eighteen percent of the pups were in the elite class. By the twentieth generation, um, that was thirty-five percent, and they're still doing the experiment now. Bearing in mind it started in fifty-nine, um, so it's quite a long, quite a long experiment. Um, now 70 to 80 percent fit into this category so it just shows how quickly I mean obviously it's still going now but within within 10 or 20 generations they had you know getting on for 50 percent of the animals were were basically domesticated from an animal that is wild so that's a that's a very short short time yeah I mean you know so that's um, basically what's happened with with domesticating the dog but just in a more haphazard way over a long term. This is just a focused effort for tameness. So obviously not all dog breeds are bred for tameness, but that is a quality that that early stages would have been bred for, and clearly people wouldn't have known as well. You know, it wouldn't have been as focused an attempt. So it has took longer, but it is basically the same process. So if so, you know, if so, within sixty years you can domesticate. Can you just, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to extrapolate too far, but you. Can you domesticate most things in six years? Well, well, a fox is not too dissimilar from a from a from a dog in that sense. Um, I'll actually get on to the animals that we have successfully domesticated. There's that. There's, there's sort of three categories. There's there's those that have been domesticated, those that have been semi-domesticated, so they never fully become they never fully become domesticated, um, and those that just simply can't be. So the, there is animals that just, would just re resist domestication altogether. Um, those that are very flighty, basically, uh, you know, herbivores that are very flighty, or animals that are just naturally very aggressive. I think maybe a Tasmanian devil or a um, honey badger or something like that, you might have trouble ever successfully domesticating. But who knows? Who knows? It might be possible if you if you persevered for long enough. Perhaps you know, if you got over that initial um, period of being killed by them, <laughs> then then possibly. Um, it's interesting. But, I wonder if you could domesticate things like pine martens and stuff because they're uh, they're quite rare and they're quite secretive and quiet. Well, pole cats, pole cats have been domesticated. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I suppose so. You might know them as the ferret. The so, ferret. So they've been domesticated. That's my stage name when I'm doing WWF wrestling. <laughs> the ferret. <laughs> John the ferret or just the ferret? Just the ferret. Well, you don't have Colin the Rock, do you? John the pole cat would have been better. I would have thought. <laughs> So go on. So you're gonna you're gonna tell us a few things that we've we've already we've managed to domesticate. Yeah. Well. Um, well, the cat comes from the African wild cat. 
um, perhaps not surprisingly. Um, perhaps also not surprisingly, the pig comes from wild boar. Um, but some people might not know, uh, cow comes from wild ox. Um, ferret, as I said, comes from European pole cats. Um, I'll share the screen. I'll, I'll put some pictures up as I'm talking. Oh, we've got pictures, everyone. Look, listen, look, 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 pictures. Uh, the chicken comes from the uh, red jungle fowl, which looks like this. That's a chicken. That's that's a no. It's a wet, it's red jungle fowl. Did you not hear him? It's a chicken. It's impressive though. I'll give you that. Um, I thought they came from dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, that's an ibex, which is which is what goats come from. Um, that that's a fish. That is a fish. Um, that's that's, a, I'm guessing that's what goldfish come from. It is Prussian carp is what goldfish come from. Um, Whoa, that's impressive. No, that's the ibex. Sorry, I got that wrong. That's the ibex there. That's um, that's what sheep come from. What an elephant? <laughs> elephant? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, 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 I've just seen flashing images in front of my face. Yeah. So that's an ibex. What? No, that's a mouflon. That's what that's what sheep come from. A mouflon. Yeah. I've um, never heard of a mouflon. But I have to say, they look better than sheep. Yeah, they're a bit more handsome than sheep, aren't yes. they? Yes. Sturdy. But and... uh, yeah, so 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 basically, that that was the experiment, and. Um, but what they found as well was that, that they were seeing genetic combinations that, that you, you wouldn't have seen in the wild population. So things that mottled and spotted colour fur, floppy ears, puppy-like appearance, raised tail. So those characteristics don't appear at all in the wild population of, um, of the red fox. But because they were breeding for tameness, they were finding that these, these mutations, these gene combinations were kind of coming along for the ride. Um, so interesting that kind of dogs also have those appearances, you know, the different coloured furs and the floppy ears and puppy-like appearance, raised tails that wolves don't have, um, dogs do, and they've basically found the red fox, which is not closely related to the wolf, um, the same thing was true, and the bred for tameness, these appearances came along for the ride, um, and they believe that basically the, common, the commonality here is adrenaline production. So when you breed, breed for tameness, what you're actually breeding for is lower adrenaline response, um, which is basically lower fear, lower fear of the handler, um, and that, that is effectively what differentiates a dog from, from a grey wolf, is, is that they've been effectively bred without knowing, by breeding for other traits, we've effectively bred them for, for a lower adrenaline So, so you, you, are you, if you, if you have less adrenaline, um, are, are we trying to subdue their, their fight or flight? Uh, well, not purposefully, not purposefully, but that is that is effectively what's happened, and and you'd be surprised how quickly the dogs would revert back to their to their type. Basically, if 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 dog dog breeds were all left to interbreed, and um, they would they would revert back to type quite quickly. They wouldn't they wouldn't revert back to a great wolf as such, but they'd revert back to a a sort of standard build and a, a standard colour, um, a kind of washed out colour and. Um, Labrador-esque build. They wouldn't. They would. They wouldn't keep all of that. All that variance that you see would breed out quite quickly. Good. So we would have. We would have no more dogs that would fit in handbags. That's exactly. that's a good. That's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I agree with that. I like. Uh, see, so for me, dogs. Dogs are, need to be um, Saint Bernards, Newfoundlands, Leon Burgers, stuff like that. Pyrenean Mountain dogs. I like big well, I dogs. You would use all, of, use all of those as well. I would suspect. Oh, okay. There's a lot of them have got unique traits, haven't they? Like <sighs> the, web, the webbed feet and stuff webbed like that. Feet, yeah. Obviously, that's been select, intensively selected and bred. We see a lot of those that you mentioned there are, are, are sort of quite new breeds, aren't they? In the last, you know, the yeah, water rescue exactly. dogs are all true. quite new. That is true. Excellent. Well, that's a, that's a good... I, I didn't know those things. I didn't know those facts. That's very good. Uh, quick round of applause for Richard. <laughs> And uh, a quick check up to see how the PC has been built. Hold on. I'll show you. Now that's a cooler. That is a heat sink and a half. Yeah. Okay, I, I was kind of hoping that we'd get slightly further on uh, by this time. 
Uh, it's have, got the CPU to start. We have, a, we have a motherboard, a CPU, and a heatsink. Yeah, that's nearly all of it. What more do you want? Uh, I'd like it on and actually uh, running an operating system. Don't be daft. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. Well, we're gonna. I'm gonna go on to my topic tonight. Uh, tonight, um, So, you may or may not know, but uh, there is a certain um, there's a certain island called Sicily, and on that island um, is an uh, a volcano uh, called Mount Etna. It's been around for a while, and I'm going to show you some pictures of various things. But we're going to start this week. Um, it's been in the news um, because Mount Edra is erupting again, and uh, I thought by I'd, I thought I'd go into a little bit about uh, Mount Edna, but also I'll give you sort of like a one on one of what is a volcano. So hence we have some pictures. This is a volcano. Obviously, it's a severely sim sim um, simplistic version of a volcano. So I thought I'll go through all of the steps, the bits and bobs of a volcano, and how it comes to exist. Um, so we've got it's all numbered. This this is not my di diagram. It's a Creative Commons diagram that we got from Wikipedia, I think. Um, so there's lots of numbers on here, and I have got the uh, the little um, scale, the little um, whatever you call it. I can't remember the name of it. Um, thing down the bottom, anyway. Um, so I'll tell you what they all are. Um, so it starts off with um, a mountain. It has to be some sort of mountain um, land mass. Um, uh, that's fairly by definition of what a volcano is. Now, down at the bottom, we've got this big red bit here. Uh, this is number one in the diagram. Number one is the magma from the uh, upper mantle. Uh, it, it exerts pressure upwards, and um, we're, it's always looking for fractures and weak spots within the, uh, within the rock structure. And it's that's how it, for them. Eh? it looks for them. Well, it's... it's <laughs> Did you not know magma was a sentient being? A volcano? <laughs> it's, it, when it's pushing up, it, the, the, it's, the pressure is, uh, is, will naturally push the magma and the lava um, outwards through the weak spots. Um, so what we've got in number two, this is the bedrock. Um, and the number three is this big, the, the, they call this the pipe, uh, which goes through the center of the, of the mountain. And uh, we've got various other things things that come out. These little things that come out here are called paras. This one at the, the top, uh, twelve, is the parasitic cone, which shoots off the main part. Uh, we've got twelve is the lava flow, and we, then right at the top we've got things like um, thirteen. <laughs> Do you want to shut over the back? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we've got the vent at the top. Uh, and uh, crater, and then we, of course we've got this ash cloud up here. So that's the first, the first thing about uh, volcanoes. Um, so what happens is when the pressure builds up, the eruption occurs. The gases and rocks shoot up through the opening and spill over and fill, uh, fill the air with lava elements. Um, now the eruptions from volcanoes can cause uh, blasts, lava flows, hot ash flows, mudslides, avalanches, falling ash, and uh, floods. Volcano eruptions have been known to uh, to knock down entire forests. Uh, an, eru an erupting volcano can trigger tsunamis, flash floods, earthquakes, uh, mud flows, and rock falls, etc., etc. And the way that the uh, the various geological surveys uh, uh, distinguish um, uh, volcanoes are three 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 categories: dormant, extinct, and active. Um, if it's dormant, uh, it's not erupted in a long time. This is, I'm guessing that's not a scientific term, uh, a long time. Is it, not, is it not dormant effectively the second it stops erupting? Uh, well, not really, not really, um, because there, it's... The, well, that's, mm, I suppose so, but, but the thing with Mount Etna, Etna is... That uh, and I'll come on to it. It's been it's been erupting and not erupting and erupting, but it's still so that's, active. A, that's active. It's then, active, basically. yeah. Right. So a dormant volcano is one that's not erupted in a long time, but there's always a possibility that it may erupt in the future. So it's it could next... be active 
it could be active but not currently erupting, basically. Yeah. So an extinct volcano is is one where it's erupted thousands of years ago, and there's no possibility of an, an, another eruption. Right. Uh, I don't I don't fully understand how they can actually say that for sure, um, but that is that's a, sort of a simplistic definition of what it is. Maybe it's just the geological features change in such a way that that I think that so. It's no more Be- likely to go there than anywhere else on the planet, basically. Because obviously there's a lot of islands, especially in the South Pacific, who are that are just were volcanoes yeah formed uh, by formed by, by yeah yeah uh, and, and then the final is the active volcano which is one it's uh, recently erupted and there is a possibility that it may erupt again soon now recently is obviously um you know depends on when when your timeline starts um so what i thought i'd do is i'd, I'd go on to uh, mount etna and i'd show you some pictures and some cracking pictures here uh, of Mount Etna and give you some background. So the first one this is this is all of this current eruption of Mount Etna. Uh, so let's just um, move this onto here. So this is um, the current picture of Etna um, erupting uh, oh, with, yeah, light, so with lightning and the, yeah. all the uh, the gas clouds at the top. Um, so Mount Etna started. Well, it's been it's been erupting since time immemorial. We first, the first recognized and first recorded an, an eruption back in 396 BC. Uh, but we know f- from other records that um, it was erupting in 122 BC, in 1030 AD, in 1160 AD, 1669. Uh, more recently, 1928, 49, 71, 81, 83, and 91 to 93. Most of the 21st century, actually, has it's been involved in some sort of activity. So it's gone through a very active stage. Then. It is, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, le- the the most recent um, sort of spurt started in, excuse me, <coughs> started in, started in uh, the 13th of May 2008. In the east of the the summit, the craters were accompanied by more than 200 earthquakes and significant ground deformation in this summit area. And the eruption continued at a slowly sort of getting less and less, a diminishing rate for about uh, 400 days. Uh, and it stopped in, about in July 2009. Um, again, two, January 2011 to February 2012, the summit craters were the site of intense activity, uh, frequent eruptions, ash columns, um, and the whole of the... Uh, Cat- Catania Airport where it was closed on multiple occasions um, uh, because it's, it's, it just simply couldn't they couldn't uh, survive with the ash clouds so it couldn't take off our land um, again 2014 there was an, another eruption started and lava flows was were, were um, seen down the sides of the of Mount Etna and lots of people were evacuate, evacuated and, and that brings us to the current one. And the current one started on the 3rd of December 2015. Uh, an, eruption, an eruption occurred um, at about 3.20 in the morning. Um, and one of the craters exhibited a lava fountain which reached a kilometre uh, in, the, in the sky, which is about 3,300 feet. Um, and there was an ash plume that, that uh, accompanied that. And that reached about three kilometers, which is about 9,800 feet. Um, and it continued. Uh, it's been continuing ever since. Uh, so this, these pictures here, this one, and uh, again, the airport's been shut down. Um, we've got the this one, which is a, a this is this is a, a, a satellite image of it erupting. If you look towards the middle of the screen here, and uh, See where there's a little block around there? That is the eruption. So this is all on weather radar. Which is interesting. It just shows you the scale of it, doesn't it? It does. That far zoomed out and it's still picking it up. And then finally, I thought this this is the one that um, I found on BBC News website. And... uh, this this shows more um, from a from a distance within uh, within Sicily, um, how it all looks when it ex- when it erupts like that. God, you must be crapping yourself if you live there. Well, I guess the kind of used to it, you would think. But I, I mean, I, I certainly I don't think I'd be living there, really. 
You know, they get a bad press, but volcanoes are very good lovers. Because <laughs> they can make your bedrock. Oh, 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 geology. Oh, a geology <laughs> humour. So that so that's what it's that's the current what it's currently undergoing at the moment. Lots of uh, gas and air uh, and and uh, ash. So interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, what do you, what do you know? Does anybody know any any interesting facts about volcanoes? I think you've covered them all, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. You see, it's too. I'm too good. Um, it, it does actually. The one I'll thing. Go on. go on then. They're very disruptive to air travel. He's already covered that. Oh, damn. <laughs> Ignore me. I think I think one of the things is that um, it's what it obviously has uh, a lot of things to do with uh, in common with um, with earthquakes because I know we did earthquakes earlier on in the year when we we actually had earthquakes to talk about. Now we've got a volcano to talk about, but the the um, uh, plate tectonics come into it. Um, so. Basically, when the Earth crust is made up of slabs called plates, they fit together, and these plates sometimes move. That's earthquakes as well happen that, um, and volcanic eruptions often happen near the edges of these plates, so they're um, they're, they're they're often linked with uh, with earthquakes um, as well. So I know one fact that I learned from you previously when you talked about um, the one at Yellowstone. Which is when they're really big, they're called super volcanoes, and they will That's, end your life and you everyone else's. Super volcano, yeah, of course. Yellowstone is, in fact, the whole entire park is a super volcano. Mm -hmm. And if it does erupt, and it, they were getting very close to erupting, wasn't it? Um, I think the last time we talked about it, they'd, they'd closed various roads off. But if it does erupt, um, essentially the whole of North America gets wiped out. Well, and, every, and everything else, basically. Uh, yeah, well, you would do, because it'll cut the sun. The whole the whole gases in the air will cut the sun out, and so we'll all. That's it. End. Um, but yes, that is a kind of all I've got actually. Um, so have you got anything, Ross, other than a half-built PC? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> have you got anything other than a half-built PC to discuss with? No. I did have something I was going to talk about, but then I never got around to it. I did read an interesting thing about there's an experiment going on to try and prove whether the universe is a hologram or not. Oh, that's that's been cool. that's that's been out for ages. That yeah, how yeah. Can, yeah still, how can you prove that though? Um, well, apparently they can't because they haven't yet. But that was basically the story. Hey, uh, that's that's stunning. That's that, like, Ross. how can you? Yeah. So, can you prove that it's not my imagination? No. Right. So <laughs> pointless then, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't put, if you can't produce any concrete evidence, then it's just that's not science. Just... No, but they're looking for evidence. They just haven't found any yet. So. Uh, can you, talk about, can you talk about the Atlas V rocket that lifted off from Cape Canaveral? I have a fact about that. It contains uh, two Raspberry Pis. Yeah. Oh, does it? Uh, Go on, then. And what, the, what are they for? They're, they're, um, they're hosting uh, science experiments that were written by school children. Ah, interesting. That's, and, uh, that, that's interesting. They're under the sort of uh, watchful eye of Tim Peake, I think. Is it is Tim, Tim Peake? Is he the, yeah. the, that's when he was just about to go up. Yeah, that's what I yeah. assume he's there now. Tim Peake um, is going to run a marathon in space. Is he? He, he is, yeah. Obviously, Obviously not this morning. One, one would presume on a treadmill. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Getting back to the Raspberry Pi thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... If you go to www.raspberrypi.org, yeah. As far as I'm aware, I don't, I, I don't think the experiment started yet because they obviously they have to do some settling down when they get up there. But the science experiments that will be running. Oh, Astro Pi. It's Astro Pi, yes, and they will be transmitting their data live, which as, as live as you can get is obviously a slide now. Um, back to I think the Raspberry Pi website, so you can actually see the results in real time. Ooh. That's pretty good. 
Excellent. And uh, let me, uh, do we? Uh, well, I, actually, I'm, I'll try and answer my own question before. Oh no, no, not that. Uh, do we know what what the ex the um, experiments are? They will be listed somewhere. I don't know what they are, but there are numerous experiments. I don't, I'm not sure if they all run. Uh, I shouldn't think they all run concurrently, but there will be um, several different experiments that were submitted by different schools um, that will run. I guess sequentially, there'll be. Uh, They'll have their allotted time slot. I assume somewhere on the Raspberry Pi site there'll be some information on that. But I'm yeah, they've, that. they've actually got their own site, astro astro-pi.org. Um, but for the life of me, I can't see what's actually happening. Um, again, I don't think it's starting straight away. So there may be a, a period of um, <coughs> dormancy. Well, 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 considering it hasn't docked with the International Space Station uh, yet. Um, the Raspberry Pis are still on their way. Oh, well, there time. we are. <laughs> and as Tim Peake hasn't got there yet. Uh, that would probably, yes, well, you know, he hasn't put the keyboard in quite yet. So. And he hasn't rebooted uh, them. Neither have we, of course, here. Yes, so, um, so, yeah, so Tim oh, Peake actually, outside. it's about, I think he's got about, there's about eight days to go before Tim Peake gets launched into space. And, oh. um, uh, they're doing it live on radio. No, not radio. Now that wouldn't go well. I was well. going to say that would be a bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it live on BBC One, um, which is the first time uh, for a long, long time that we've had a, an actual launch um, on live on uh, mainstream national television in the UK. Mm -hmm. The space shuttle, I guess, was the last one, wasn't it? One of the space, yeah, the, one of the spaceships would have been the last one, and then obviously before that, the Apollo missions. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, but yes, so um, I think it's well, the fifteenth of December is when he's doing the launch. He's he's getting launched up there the fifteenth. So uh, is that is that the weekend? When is that? Uh, no, it's a Tuesday. Well, that's typical. I'm going to be at work. <laughs> Never mind, we have YouTube access, so I'm sure I'll be able to get have NASA TV streaming. That'll kill our bandwidth. Uh, well, that that is probably it then. Um, because uh, a, a story came out this week connected to your story last week, John. A story came out this week connected to my story last week. Yeah, you were ahead of the curve about uh, humankind's water use. Ah what yes, no, use. actually yes. The, there's be, actually, well, you see, this is this is this is fairly typical in the first year of uh, Wonder of Stuff. We, yeah, uh, hey, loads of times we've been there, and then the Daily Mail or someone's copied. Absolutely, us. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, actually, one, yeah. So what? What, the Daily what Mail, did they say? Chief editor, I was obviously one of the seven people who watched it. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? What did they say about it? Exactly what we said. On the... No, no. They're just saying that they've they've, they've done a um, a footprint footprint count of of how much, and it's it's twenty percent higher than previously thought to do with um, sort of damming and sort of water management. So we're retaining more fresh water than previously thought. Oh, interesting. Eighteen percent. Um, sorry, not twenty percent. Yeah. Well, also, what what I need to say is before um, before we come to a premier premature end um, uh, and uh, Ross has disappointed me wholeheartedly by not having a computer working. Well, uh, there's a bit of progress. If the, we've got the power supply screwed in. So so, so we've got a, a CPU on a motherboard with a heat sink and a power supply screwed in. Yeah, it's just you plug it in now. <sighs> no, okay. it's barely there. Just five minutes. <laughs> Okay, what what I need to say is some uh, administrivia. Because this is our first birthday, we have woohoo, woo, yeah, woohoo. Um, um, oh, gone. Oh. <laughs> Trying to start. Um, what what I what I have to say is there's been some changes. Uh, we we have now got our our I'm own domain fired. name. We have what? Have you, have you replaced me? Yeah, with a uh, a nice nineteen uh, seventies Chinese vase. That's minging. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. Um, no, what I wanted to say is we we have now we have our own domain name. <laughs> Richard's gone. 
<laughs> the fact that he, think, he thinks the Ming Dynasty was in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, my 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 lovely wife was. <laughs> we were. We were watching the, you know, the John Lewis advert, the Man in the Moon, and oh, yeah. uh, and and we watched this for the nth degree, uh, the nth time, and um, and she said, "I'm very, I'm very surprised you've never said anything about uh, uh, how unscientific all this is." I said, "Oh God, don't, don't <laughs> even, don't even start about how many inaccuracies in this." <laughs> I mean, you could start with the the fact that that little mic, that little uh, telescope, could no way see into the girl's <laughs> bedroom, and also, um, you know. Oh God! You see, you don't even suspend belief when you're watching a John Lewis advert. No, I find it very hard. <laughs> That's why do you think I don't go to the cinema? I can't, I can't dis- dis- suspend disbelief for anything. <laughs> anyway, really so what? What I wanted to say is, we oh, have gosh. a new domain name. Sorry. Wonder of St- Wonderstuff.com. Hey! Finally, I've, I managed to work it out how to work that and get the old one work. So we still have oh, this one. All right. We still have this one, uh, uh, and we have that one. Very good. <sighs> Excellent. Well done. That's not the, that's not the only bit. Hang on now. Oh, oh, there's more. I have spent my entire weekend registering us with all sorts of podcast directories video streaming services etc etc and i have just found out tonight before we came on air that anybody who has a pure radio or a pure streaming service can now get I've got the wonder of com streamed to their radio stroke jungle stroke whatever that's impressive there's now 50 different ways you can not listen to us <laughs> <laughs> And nice can, we, can we can we aggregate all these amazing number of views in the one number? Uh, well, actually, I was going I was going to come up with uh, tonight now live here. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to give you some new numbers of how many people since I started registering. Oh, and three. Um, <laughs> we've actually gone down. No, <laughs> uh, we Quite haven't. Negative we haven't. numbers now. That is that is, is not, minus four people watching back. this. <laughs> You'll have to take back a few. That is not true. We haven't gone down. We are um we are uh, when well the last one I registered with the uh, with the various services was um episode episode thirty five. We had we had fifteen viewers and wow. now we've got forty five. Wow. Well, forty five views anyway. And that was I did that on Saturday. No, it is view it is view us now because you can only. Oh, is it? Only... Well, there you go. Impressive. Uh, what a week. Yeah, it, unfortunately, if you look if you look at the actual graph of trend analysis, um, <laughs> we've kind of gone down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but generally. It's all positive, guys. Well, we've had we've, on the on the channel. We've had seventeen hundred and forty-one views. That's not bad. Uh, actually, w- w- but obviously yeah. that'll count. That'll count people who watch every week. Hello. Hello. Come, come and say happy birthday. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> this is this everybody happy is birthday. Nicola. And uh, Nicola is the wife of Ross. Um, she's long suffering. Um, I am. Look, I've got balloons. Wow. Balloons and streamers. Great. Is that how old you are, Richard? Yeah. Oh, it's the Wonder of Stuff's one year sure. old. Oh, the Wonder of Stuff's one year old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, congratulations, everyone. Yeah. Well done. Can you celebrate with us live on air? Yeah, you're on air. Woo! I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and pour a nice large glass of wine. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, that is a very good idea. I haven't got anything to drink, and I'm not on call this week. <laughs> I'm not on call this week, so uh, cool, right? And so, um, yeah, so that that's probably it, really. Um, uh, I, I can't echo it out any longer. <laughs> that's a cozy forty minutes, and Rich is b- balancing a tomato on his nose. It was a party nose. Oh, we may have we may have this finished by next week. 
<laughs> oh, you see, I've gone backwards again. Why have I gone backwards? You are backwards. Oh, there you go. Uh, I must give you a warning for anybody who's got epilepsy. Stay in the same way for us. Yeah. Is it? It's not moving. Yeah, anyway, anyway. So, okay. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to end uh, this just, just shambolic. Like end. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, none of us are drunk. <laughs> well, no, that's true. <laughs> none of us are drunk. I haven't got any. I haven't got a G and T. Uh, anyway, so I'd like to say um, yes. Obviously, well, this is this has been the wonder of stuff, episode number fifty-two. Um, broadcasting live every weekend uh, and Mondays when we fancy it and Newcastle win. Yay! And, yay! It doesn't happen very often, it's alright. No. Uh, so don't worry. So, um, as ever, our Twitter handles have been visible all evening, so please tweet us. Well, okay, my Twitter handle has been visible all evening, so please tweet me uh, and I'll pass it on unless it's really bad, and then I'll just uh, I'll put my hands over there. Then, you'll, def little, uh, then you'll definitely pass it on. Then I'll definitely yeah. pass it on. Uh, email address: We can all share the email address, uh, the mailbox. It's wonderstuff at gmail dot com. We have the old URL, which is wonderstuff dot blogspot dot com. But don't use that anymore, everybody. Use this one. Use wonderstuff dot com. Okay. And uh, that's where you find all of the stuff that we put on the website, the reading lists, the bits about us, bits about li links to uh, the topics. No, no, no. That's a dog? Yes, that's a dog. Come to destroy all our good work. Okay. Well, what good work? Let's frankly, it's probably it's probably, it's probably better. Oh, right. The dog, the dog, get the dog just involved and see. Get the dog involved. It'll go. What have you been doing? I can knock this. I can knock this shit together. It. I need a few years to domesticate them first. <laughs> Only 60, if you're very, very efficient. <laughs> okay, and, uh, and that's it for this evening. So please, please tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell them to watch. Force them to watch. Force them. Yes. Put them in a headlock. Say, you must, you must learn about science. Smash the damn screen right to their face. <laughs> i tell you what. Well, just to end up, shall we... Richard... Give us, give us some Tim Westwood. Oh, I haven't got it in hand. Oh, you, you, I gave you them. Then. I, I didn't expect you to put us on the spot like that. Because well, we'd like it, would never do anything on the drop spot. Dropping the bombs. <laughs> yeah, drop, drop a Tim Westwood bomb. That was it. Oh, Dropping the bombs. Okay, right, okay. You right, mean, bye, bye, you everybody. You're a podcast in this car. It's in your car that you want to hear it. <laughs> Bye bye everybody. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> you can't get the staff. <laughs>